I'm rigging a bulletproof shield from a double knot spy car. <laughs> you have to bang so loud, I can hear you clean out in the kitchen. If you think it's loud in the kitchen, you ought to be under here. <laughs> Hey, boy. Yeah, Uncle Jeff, what? Why don't you do your pounding with a tub up? That way you could see what you're doing and it wouldn't be so hard on your ear. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Jeff, you know something? You're smart enough to be a double knot spy yourself. You want to come with me to the West Indies and join up? West Indies? Yeah, that's where Double Knot 7 is right now. Oh, I think I'll pass it. <laughs> a lot of fun. Pretty girls. Danger? Excitement? I thought you had give up your double note spying. I can't, Uncle Jet. It's in my blood. I'm cut out for all that fighting and loving. Well, there you was right keen on being a brain surgeon. Why, them rascals don't even lay in the same kraut barrel with the double knots. <laughs> Why, a brain surgeon might go for days without doing no worthwhile fighting or loving. <laughs> That's my ejector seat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you're bound and determined, huh, boy? Yes, sir, Uncle Jet. The minute I read old Double Knot 7 was over there in the West Indies, I said, Jethro, pack up and get going. What's all this stuff? Oh, this here's my iron hat. <laughs> this here's my Double Knot spy coat. <laughs> Got all the tools of the trade in here. Weapons, disguises, telegraph set. Yeah, I know about your spy coat. You don't know I got it armor plated. <laughs> I'm a walking tank with this on. Fine, boy. Uh, what's all this other stuff? <laughs> this here's Biddles from a trip. <laughs> How far is it to this here uh, West Indies? Oh, it's way over yonder. Clean the other side of Kansas City. <laughs> well, uh, couldn't you live here at home and do your work in town? No, sir. Double Knot Spies ain't got no Beverly Hills office. <laughs> Can you open one? Just between you and me, I ain't a real for sure official double knot spy yet. How come? Just can't find out where to go to join up. I see. That's why I got to drive to the West Indies. Well, uh, maybe if you opened up an office here and uh, done a real good job, they'd hear about it and come to you. You reckon so? Well, it's worth a try, and it sure beats driving clean the other side of Kansas City. <laughs> I'll stake you to the rent. I'll pay you back quick as I save my first country. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. I'll call Mr. Drysdale and see has he got an empty office in his bank building. Get your old man that chicken. I got a job for you. Bye, Uncle Jed. Hey, tell Mr. Drysdale I'm on my way. <laughs> Just the office you've been looking for. Jethro? Come on, Mr. Drysdale. And this year flattens out a feller's arches. Why are you wearing this heavy coat on such a warm day? Oh, I can't tell you just yet. It's top secret. Oh. Well, go on and take a look around. Go ahead. Mr. Drysdale, could you give me a little shot to get me started? <laughs> I just heard what you're doing. You can't rent this office. Who says I can? Well, it's the only vacancy in the building, and the Baker and Associates have been waiting six months for it. They're moving in this afternoon. How much money have they got in my bank? Well, none. Mm -hmm. Well, Jed Clampett has a bundle, and he wants his office for Jethro. Now, who do you think's going to get it? <laughs> well, Jethro, how do you like it? <laughs> Who's Jethro? <laughs> Didn't know it was me, did you? <laughs> this is just one of my disguises. I got a whole slew of them. Why do you need disguises? Miss Jane, when a fellow lives close to danger, he's got to be ready for anything. <laughs> Help me up, would you? <laughs> Jethro, are you double not spying again? Shh. Oh, I reckon the place ain't been bugged yet. <laughs> this is gonna be Double Knot Spy Headquarters from Beverly Hills. Chief, did you hear that? Yes, isn't it marvelous? Welcome, Jethro. It gives me a feeling of great security to have one of you brave chaps so close to my vault. Am I close to your vault? This desk is directly over it. 
hot dog. You won't have to worry about it with me sitting here. Oh, I might have been followed. I'll use an old double knot spy trick and disguise my voice. Hello? Well, just a minute, I can't hear you. What'd you say? Granny? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. All right, I'll come right now. Leave my spy headquarters open for me, will you? I got to get home and tote Granny's vittles back into the root cellar and pluck a chicken. Dad, you just can't turn him loose in downtown Beverly Hills. Granny, let him get this spy stuff out of his system. A couple of days, he'll be wanting to be a streetcar conductor again. Shoot nickels and dimes out of one of them money squirters. Already, Pop. Bye, Granny. Where are you going? Well, down to Jethro's spy office. Pop says I can be his secretary. Jed Clampett. Well, he can keep her eye on a boy. Keep him out of mischief. And she might just meet a fella or two. Well, all right. If you find one you like, fetch him home for vittles. Yes, some Granny. Well, I'm all done. See you later. Wait for your secretary. My what? I told Ellie she could work for you down to the spy office. Oh, no! <laughs> oh. Now, Granny, he'll be all right. It ain't him. <laughs> able to reach Mr. Baker. He's going to show up any minute expecting to move into 205. You leave Baker to me. Just see that Jethro's happy. Speaking of Jethro, the building custodian says he's installing all kinds of crazy things up in that office. Good. He's happy. And so am I. His uncle's paying for it. You're the boss. Remember that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know it was me, did you? Jethro. <laughs> Very clever, Jethro. You're a born spy. <laughs> what have you got? That thing. Armor plate. Now, this coat will turn a rifle bullet. <laughs> well, what's this, Jethro? Don't yank that. Why not? <laughs> Do you blow up? <laughs> well, ma'am, this here's a secret weapon. Now, watch my shoe when I yank this. Well, it ain't working right now. But when it does, a pointy blade pops out of the toe of my shoe. What for? Well, old Smursh has got them. And if they go to kicking to me, I'm going to kick right back. My <laughs> work, Jethro. You're a credit to your profession. Now, get up to your spy headquarters and make us proud of you. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'll do my best. Oh, hey, has anybody been asking for me? Only the custodian. No, no, I mean anyone from uh, International not, not Headquarters. I don't think so. Well, they don't use names. Uh, just uh, letters like M or Q. <laughs> that the way, I'll be on the lookout for them. Gee, you shouldn't encourage him to play spy. He's taking it seriously. Well, so am I. If it'll help keep the Clampett account, he can call me Milburn Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared. It's me in disguise. Oh, remarkable. But thank you. Now, if Emma Q or anybody with knots in their names comes looking for me, be sure to send them to my office. I'll do that. Doggone, I sure wish I could get that blade to pop out of my shoe before they come. Oh! Oh! What's the matter? I, I must have put it in backwards. Oh, that's smart. Oh, are you all right? Sure, I'm a double knot. I'm going to put this back on just in case I go to crying. <laughs> Forgive my curiosity, but what was that? Oh, well, he's just a, uh, um, a temporary tenant. Not on my floor, I hope. <laughs> well, I'm Vincent Baker, Baker and Associates. Oh, dear. You seem distressed to see me. Well, I am, yes. After him? <laughs> well, uh, m m Mr. Drysdale will explain everything to you, Mr. Baker. What is there to explain? I've been waiting for 205 for six months. You said it would be ready today. Here I am. Yes. 
Well. Yes? The, the chief, this is Mr. Baker. He'd like an explanation about 205. Well, he's entitled to one. See as he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, looks as though it's up to me, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Tell me, um, have you ever seen a uh, James Bond movie? As a matter of fact, I've seen them all. Oh, good. That, that, that will make it easier. You see, Mr. Baker, the nephew of our largest depositor, fancies himself another 007. <laughs> Maybe you want to call off this bank job. Honey, there's a quarter of a million sitting in that vault under 205. I've been waiting six months to get at it. But the plan isn't working out. That Jethro kid's got the office. I'll take care of the kid. Besides, it's got to be tonight. The plane's all set. Marty's waiting in Mexico. It'll work out. Vince, it's too dangerous. This kid may not be as dumb as you heard. Take a look at his door. <laughs> There's my first contact, Ellie. Now, you know what to do. Come in. How do you do? Hi. We'd like to see Spy Bodine, please. We're from London headquarters. You are? I don't know. Ellie May, you dumb old girl, I told you to be sophisticated and mysterious. A face from London headquarters. I'll fetch him in, huh? No. Us double knots can't let folks walk in on their own say-so. I gotta check them out through the secret two-way mirror first. Now, you get back out there and sneak that picture off the wall. Would y'all step over here in front of the secret two-way mirror, please? <laughs> Secret stuff. Okay, nut nut. It's not fun. All my calls. I ain't into nobody. <laughs> oh, you ain't mad at me for opening up a Beverly Hills headquarters without your say so. It is slightly irregular. Quite. It's the only way I'd get you to notice me. As a matter of fact, we've had our eye on you for some time. <laughs> right, Kay? Right. K? J? K? L? Gee whiz, you're hired now. Yes? What's your initial? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm Jay. Gates <laughs> thought the Beverly Hills office should have top priority. It's a dandy. Well, right now, there's a secret movie camera taking pictures of us. Really? Yes, ma'am. I got it hidden in the wall. Where? Oh, right over here. <laughs> Let's see, where'd I hide that rascal? <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> Must have plastered over the lens. <laughs> well, these things happen. Right, Kay? Uh, right, Jack. I got the office bugged. You have? Yes, sir. See them pencils over there? Yes. Well, one of them is a little wireless microphone and sending set. I think this is it. Oh, by golly, I believe this is just a regular pencil. <laughs> I guess it was right the first time. <laughs> well, anyhow, everything we've set up to now has been recorded on tape. We'd like to hear it. Yes, sir. I got a tape recorder hid right here in this drawer. <laughs> you got something in backwards. <laughs> Maybe I can remember everything we said. Uh, let's see, when you first walked in, you said that Never you... mind. 
How am I doing so far? You mean there's more to show us? Well, yes, ma'am. I got something in this closet Q section ain't even got. Wait till you see it. Right under that desk, sweetheart. Two hundred and fifty thousand. But how do we get rid of the goof? We don't. We let him dig through the concrete. What? No. I think he's just putting in another spy gadget. <laughs> and when he's through with the noisy work, tonight I'll come in with the cutting torch and... This here's my armor plate and spy coat. I got a rig with a tear gas squirter. Now step back and watch this. <laughs> I got that in backwards, too. <laughs> but I got something else to show you. Quick as I get this off. <laughs> now watch my shoe. <laughs> there, I got the bugs out of that. Now if old Schmurz goes to kicking at me, they'll get it right back. how it works. Well, that's all I got ready to show you right now. Do I get sworn in? If your escape hatch passes inspection, you're all set. Hot dog! My what? The escape hatch under your desk. I ain't got no escape hatch under my desk. Did you hear that, Jay? I can't believe it, Jay. H must never know. You mean I'm supposed to have a hole in the floor to get through? That's the first thing you should have prepared. But I can't make one there. Did I hear a potential double O spy say he couldn't build an escape hatch? Well, not under that desk. You see, let's go. Too bad. He was doing so well. Had a perfect score up the lair. <laughs> Give me another chance, please. Wait a minute. Listen. Sorry, we're leaving town tonight. I'll have one by then. Is that a promise? Cross my heart and hope to gas myself. <laughs> What do you think, Kay? Uh, we'll never find another brain like his. <laughs> He's a double zero if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Very well. But keep it top secret. Gee, thanks, Jay. You too, Kay. I'll have it ready when you get back. <laughs> Hot dog! LMA, you and me's trading offices. Well, how come? I gotta cut a hole in the floor, and there's a steel ball under mine. <laughs> I want to show you Jethro's office personally. Who's there? That you, Baker? <laughs> no, no, Chief, it's the Clampets. Oh. Come in, come in. <laughs> Awful nice of you to have Miss Jane fetch us down. Oh, not at all. I... I thought you'd like to see what nice accommodations we've given Jethro. Hope he ain't being a double knot nuisance to you, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> On the contrary. Yes, the chief was just saying, having Jethro here makes the whole building more secure. Where are you going, Jethro? I'm going to climb up on your desk and jump through that hole I chiseled in the floor. Well, well I know how there yet. There will be. Help me up. <laughs> Let's go up and look at spy headquarters, shall we? General! What a blue blaze is this going on? That's my double out escape hat. Howdy, Paul. Howdy, Granny. Gilly <laughs> May, get down here and cover up that hole before somebody gets hurt. Yes, I'm Granny. <laughs> Sure hope I don't have to skate too often. It's a pretty fair drop. You mean you busted that hole in the ceiling of purpose? I had to. Otherwise, Jay wouldn't swear me in. Who's Jay? Well, he's the head spy from London. If I'd have put the hole where he wanted me to, I'd have had to bust into your vault. My vault? Yes, sir. Step into my office. I want to hear more. <laughs> Him on that page? No, sir. How about this page? There he is. That's old Jay. 
It's Tony the Torch Montanero. <laughs> alias Vincent Baker. Alias Vince Vecchio. Alias Gene Booth. Alias Bob Graham. Boy, has he got this guy's up. <laughs> Ellie, you covered the hole, didn't you? Yes, ma'am, Granny. I sewed the carpet back over it. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, on your feet. <laughs> How soon will he be back? In about ten years. <laughs> ten years? I can't wait that long to get swore in. <laughs> hey, wait for me. Someday, I gotta have a long talk with that boy. <laughs> so doggone much. It ain't the outfit, it's a 70 pounds of mothballs. <laughs> now, hurry up and load the other stuff. Let's get going. But, Granny, we's gonna get home with plenty of time for the Possum Festival. I got campaigning to do. Speeches to make. Votes to get. Get through? Let's show Granny a sign you made for her. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> It sure is, and we're going to put it on the side of the truck quick as we get to Sibley. Wait a minute. Here comes Miss Drysdale. I want her to see it. She thinks she's so all fired high and mighty in her big limousine. My granny, the woman is doing us a mighty neighborly turn, offering to move in and take care of the place whilst we's gone. Yeah, I wonder why. Never mind, you just be pleasant. All right. But I still want her to see my son. Hi, Miss Drysdale. Uh, I'll take that, young fella. Well, Mr. Clampett, here's your housekeeper all ready to go to work. <laughs> yeah, well, it sure is uncommon kind of you, and we're all mighty grateful, especially Granny. Granny, come say howdy to Miss Drysdale. Be right there, just checking something. Fine boy. Congratulations, Granny. I see you're running for Possum Queen. Where'd you see that? Oh, oh all the signs. Well, it was kind of forced on me. But it's a great honor if I win. Being Possum Queen is about the highest honor that can come to a woman. Last year it was Lady Bird. <laughs> <laughs> the Ladybird? Ladybird Hacklemeyer. <laughs> She's the one that always takes first prize with her doilies at the county fair. Uh, that one. You know another Ladybird Hacklemeyer? <laughs> no. Uh, well, can I help you load up? Oh, no, no. We can take care of that. Uh, you'd best talk to Ellie May about taking care of her critters. Oh, yes. Yes. That's something I'm looking forward to, caring for all those darling little animals. <laughs> now, Duke, you're the oldest, so you'll be in charge while we scum. Harm, you're the biggest, so you'll be Duke's right hand down. Arnie, you keep your eye on all of them. She's the smartest. <laughs> and now remember, everybody, come Possum Day, Wendell is king. <laughs> you reckon this is enough lunch, Chad? Yeah, Granny, that ought to be enough to get us plum home. Anything else to load? Yeah, boy, I put this in the truck. Oh, yes, sir. What is it? Lunch. Hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did not you pack nothing for the rest of you? <laughs> Granny, look at there. This Drysdale's treating Ellie's critters like they owed her money. I still say we's gonna find her sugar is mostly sand. <laughs> You've been grousing for three years because Mrs. Drysdale ain't a good neighbor. Now she's trying to be one and you're still pecking at her. Jed, I've heard of sweet milk turning sour, but never the other way round. <laughs> Ellie says she'll meet you on the truck around front. Now, have a wonderful trip and enjoy the festival. Too bad you don't have one here. Yeah, we wouldn't have to go if Beverly Hills wasn't so bad. Well, we are, and you wouldn't want to miss the honor of being queen. It ain't just the honor. Why, there's a fortune in prizes, yeah. starting with the weighing in ceremony. First off, the queen gets her weight in person. Oh, no. Then comes the letting out ceremony. In Possum Day, all the prisoners get laid out of jail. And from then on, it's just one big to do after another. Mule shoeing contest? Blood wrestling and rock throwing? Crawdad eating contest? Prizes for the longest hair and the biggest feet. Keep talking like that, and Miss Drysdale will hop right on and go with us. Ain't that right, Miss Drysdale? It is tempting. But my plans are all made to stay here and look after your house. Sure you won't mind all that work? Not at all. With Milbert out of town, it'll give me something to do. My dog is Miss Drysdale. You've turned into such a fine neighbor, it seems a shame to be leaving. Now, Jed, you got the next possum queen setting here. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you, ma'am. Let her roll, Jethro. See you in a couple of weeks. Stay as long as you like. <laughs> So, when I got a chance to fly back with Pendleton in his private plane, I figured why stay till Saturday? I'm saving airline fare, hotel bills, meals, taxis, comes to a bundle. Good sound economic thinking, Chief. Well, it isn't just that. I'm a sentimental so-and-so. I had to get back to my loved ones. How sweet. Yes, sir, when we get to the bank, I'm going into that vault and fondle every bill. <laughs> For a foolish moment there, I thought you were talking about your family. Oh, I called Margaret from the airport. She was next door helping the neighbors pack up to leave. I thought the Bensons were in Europe. They are. <laughs> the crash! <laughs> Step on it! I couldn't trust that woman. Start collecting up these songs. Well, welcome. You're the first customer. Of Melbourne! <laughs> oh, no, you don't. You're supposed to be in Chicago. Never mind Chicago. What do you think you're doing? Where are the Krampets? What have you done with them? Why are you selling this house? I'm not going to talk to you until you stop shouting at me. Okay, okay. I, I'm not shouting now. Talk to me. That's better. Well, how are things in Chicago? Did you see him? Not that kind of talk. I want to know about the climate. You're shouting again. <laughs> Chief, there's a truck here from the animal shelter. Your wife told them to pick up all of Ellie's pets. You what? Still shouting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have it. Where are the Krampets? On their way back to the hills, and good riddance. Quick, Miss Hathaway, we've got to catch them. Wait! What about me? <laughs> yeah, mister, you got the key. Oh, yeah. There. Drive her through the middle of town and let her out in front of her beauty shop. <laughs> Chief, it would 
would be sheer folly to go dashing about in every road to the east. But if we organize an intelligence search... All right, all right. Alert the highway patrol, missing persons, the FBI. And I want roadblocks at the state line. And have a helicopter standing by for me on the roof. Hey, Mr. Drydale. Be with you in a minute. And let's get some planes in the air. Have them fly over every... Oh, it's you. You're here. Oh. <laughs> we just thought we'd come down and say goodbye to Miss Jane, but then we heard she was down at the airport fetching you, so we thought we'd wait and say goodbye. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Dreiser, but you're cutting off my wind. <laughs> oh, it's just that I'm so glad to see you. Well, you've seen us, so goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Jane. Now, wait, wait. Why are you going home? For the Possum Festival. You ain't forgot it's coming on for Possum Day, have you? Of course not. <laughs> well, you can celebrate it right here. Yeah, we tried that last year. It ain't much fun when you're the only one celebrating. We drove all over town yelling, Happy Possum Day. <laughs> Folks looked at us like we was hanging off our hinges. <laughs> this year, we's going back home where they have a real festival. Bye. <laughs> wait, wait. Well, I guess I'm going to have to tell you the big secret. Well, what is it? Beverly Hills is planning the biggest festival in the history of Possum Day. She? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's supposed to be a surprise, but I can't let them go home and miss it. Well, tell us about it. Step in my office. Uh, Chief, uh, Chief, I am certain that Beverly Hills Possum Festival cannot be nearly as good as the one they have back home. Oh, nonsense. She's just modest because she's in charge of the arrangements. <laughs> uh, doggy, she is modest, ain't she? Miss Jane, you're gonna have to go some to beat that big blowout back in Sibley. <laughs> he can do it. <laughs> you gonna have a big parade? Gigantic, colossal. Crawdad eating contest? <laughs> of course. Jethro usually walks away with that. That in the big feet contest. How about rock slinging and mud wrestling? That's Ellie May's specialty. Well, you have Miss Hathaway's word. Her possum festival is going to be just like the one back home, only bigger and better. <laughs> what do you say, Granny? I say let's go back home to Sibley. Why? Because back there, I got a good chance of being possum queen. <laughs> well, you can be possum queen right here. Uh, I can't win an election in Beverly Hills. Oh, yes, you can, right, Miss Hathaway? <laughs> I can put on the festival, she could win the election. <laughs> Any ride in a parade? Of course. Will lots of people see me like back home? More. Millions more. Million? She'll be on television. Television? Me? Color television, coast to coast. <laughs> right, Miss Hathaway? <laughs> well, what do you say now, Granny? I say let's stay here and be on television. <laughs> That's the spirit. Well, then it's sailed. Now, we'll be running along. I reckon what with putting on a possum festival, Miss Jane has got a few loose ends to tie up. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be worth it. A thing like this could put Beverly Hills on the map. <laughs> Look what it done for Sibley. <laughs> it just hit me. What hit you, Granny? Just drive the truck, boy. I'll find out what hit her. What hit you, Granny? Why Miss Drysdale turned so sweet on us? Why she offered to keep the house for us? Why did she, Granny? Drive the truck, boy. I'll find out why did she. Why did she, Granny? She wanted me out of town so she could be possum queen of Beverly Hill. You reckon so? Why, it's as plain as the nose on your face. I knew she was up to something. I told you we'd find sand in her sugar. <laughs> the election ain't over. She ain't won yet. I'll stump Beverly Hills from one end to the other. Sit down, Granny. So will Miss Drysdale, and she knows everybody in her dog. Just drive the truck, boy. I've got experience on my side. I've run for Possum Queen 47 times. Yeah, but Jane never won. <laughs> True, Granny. Drive the truck, boy. The Clampett Mansion is not for sale. Those signs were a mistake. Now, will you real estate guys please stop bugging me? <laughs>
Excuse me, Mr. Drysdale, but Mr. Clampett is calling for you on line one. Beverly Hills Possum Festival headquarters. Oh, how's the festival coming along? Oh, beautifully, beautifully. Did Miss Hathaway get that parade permit? She isn't back from City Hall. Yes, everything's great. <laughs> it couldn't be better. Well, that's just fine. Now, we've been having a little family go around. Granny says she knows why your wife is so anxious to get us out of town. She does? <laughs> it's because she don't want me running again her for Beverly Hills Possum Queen. Ain't that right? Y yes, yes, that's right. It was a dirty trick, and I'm going to see that she withdraws immediately and lets you win. You tell her she ain't gonna give me nothing. I'll beat her fair and square in her own backyard. And furthermore, you tell her for me that she ain't nothing. Granny's a little worked up. Uh, nothing she likes better than a good scrap. So you tell your wife to put on her rip snort in this campaign, and may the best woman be Possum Queen. Bye. Uh, hello, hello. Mr. Clampett. Mr. Clampett. Hello, hello. Oh, boy. Well, what do you want? Do we get Possum Day off? <laughs> I told you that woman was up to something. I told you she couldn't be trusted. I told All you All right, she... Granny, now here's a chance to learn her a lesson. Now let's get started on your campaign. Ah, here's the girl with the good news. Well, let's have it. The city of Beverly Hills refuses to allow a possum festival, a possum parade, or the celebration of Possum Day in any way, shape, or form. Is all that good news? Tito, I implore you, tell the club it's the truth before it's too late. It is too late. Granny is all set to run against my wife for Possum Queen. Your wife? How did you ever manage that? Well, somebody has to get this show on the road. <laughs> now, let's see if you can hold up your end. You get over to that city hall and tell those jokers, I want my festival. Ch Chief, I did everything humanly possible. I begged, I pleaded, they, they just wouldn't listen. All right, I'll bail you out, they'll listen to me. Because I'm not going over there begging and pleading. I'm going in there demanding. I'll show you how to fight city hall. Put me down! <laughs> You tell those ward healers they'll be sorry for this. I'm taking my possum festival to Pasadena. <laughs> you people here in Pasadena are in a rut with that rose parade. Every year, the same day. Now, here's my idea. Let's have it next Wednesday, and we'll call it the possum parade. <laughs> Instead of a rose queen, we'll have a possum queen. <laughs> Instead of that same old football game in the Rose Bowl, we'll have mud rasping, rock throwing, ball calling contest, throw that eating. <laughs> now, wait a minute. This, this could be a great thing for Pasadena. Please, it was just a suggestion. Please, please. Oh, hey, I forgot. Can Granny hold her voting rally out in the bank parking lot? Well, I suppose so. Oh, thanks. Oh, come on down and see the campaign truck. It is a doozy. All right, Alan, that's the meeting. Howdy, Miss Jane, Miss Drago. Greetings. How do you like my bandwagon? Great crowd pleaser, ain't it? Oh, indeed it is. <laughs> Folks, it's starting to come, Granny. Possum 
queen granny granny she don't ride no limousine granny all the way to stay on election day the finest queen you've ever seen granny all the way Citizens of Orange County, for years now, you people have been holding the same old orange festival with an orange queen, an orange parade. Who needs it? Let Florida have the oranges. We'll put on a possum festival and a possum queen and a possum parade. It'll be something new. Break down the bell. Now, folks, in conclusion, it's exactly one week to Possum Day. Who will be your queen? Will it be Miss Drysdale or me? The choice is up to you. But come Election Day, remember where you got the cider that we're going to pass out right now. Let's go. Miss Hathaway. Is there really going to be a possum festival? That, my dear Marie, depends upon Mr. Drysdale. Good luck, Chief. Wherever you are, <laughs> citizens of Apple Valley. <laughs> Have you ever thought of changing the name of your community to Possum Valley? <laughs> Your Royal Majesty, ma'am. Ted, don't you go to jinxing me. I ain't queen yet. Granny, you got this election in your pocket. Miss Drysdale ain't even putting up a scrap. And that's what's got me wondering what she's up to. Do you reckon that she's gonna pull out of the race? That ain't likely. Miss Drysdale sets a great store by being a society leader of Beverly Hills. You know she ain't gonna turn down a chance to be possum queen. <laughs> that's true. But then why is she laying back? Politics, you never know. Kid, do you think she's planning to come out at the last minute with a smear campaign? There ain't nothing she can dig up again you. Is there? Kid, yeah, the road of life is long and rocky. And when you've walked as many miles as I have, you're, you're likely to stumble a time or two. Well, I reckon your slate's as clean as any. Ready? Just throw it me. Got some more election posters ready for you. Well, give them to my campaign manager here. I can't stand it no longer. I gotta peek through the hedge and see what Miss Drysdale's up to. <laughs> she ain't up to nothing. We could have told her that. Well, let me see the posters. Maybe we can stir up something. <laughs> Granny, the possum's choice. <laughs> Vote the Granny ticket. Granny will cut taxes. Granny will cut taxes? <laughs> yes, sir. That's a real popular campaign promise. Everybody from mayor to president makes that one. Yeah, but Granny ain't. Well, I reckon she can keep it about as good as the others have. You got some more, too, Paul. Where do you want them? I want them where Mrs. Drysdale is sure to see them. Wednesday is Possum Day, and there still ain't no sign of her campaign. Ain't no sign of Possum Day, neither. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, Ellie and me's been all over Beverly Hills. Don't look like they's getting ready for no festival. Right or nothing. We ought to gone back home like we started to. Yeah, instead of letting Mr. Drysdale talk us out of it. Yeah, we could have... Now, now, youngins. Mr. Drysdale promised us a bigger deal than the one back home. And he is a man of his word. Chief, why did you lie to them? <laughs> I did not lie to them. But you promised them the Beverly Hills would put on a fabulous possum festival. No, I did not. 
I promised them you would put it on. <laughs> now it's up to you to see that I keep my word. But, but there's nothing I can do without the official approval of the city. You've already been turned on by Pasadena, Santa Ana, Azusa, Cucamonga. All right, all right. Chief, I implore you, before it's too late, let's put the Clabbits on a plane for home. Oh. It's the only place in the civilized world where Possum Day is celebrated. Well, I'm going to change that. There must be plenty of communities around here that would jump at that opportunity. Now, let's see. Ah, here's one right on the coast. Possum Beach. That's Pismo Beach. <laughs> Well, maybe they'll change it. Granny'd like that. And that's another thing. Granny thinks she's running for possum queen against your wife. So? So your wife doesn't even know about it. And, and Granny keeps wondering when she's going to start her campaign. She's going to start her campaign this morning. She is? Yes. She doesn't know it, but she is. Happy dear? Well, I suppose so. But aren't you neglecting things at your precious bank? Not at all. I can dictate as we're driving. Uh, let's swing by the Clampett place. Oh, Milburn, whatever for? I want to show those peasants what real class looks like. <laughs> How are we supposed to wait out here? All Mr. Drysdale said was to go out front. There was something coming by we ought to see. Well, he better hurry. And... Yonder comes the limousine. What's that sign on the front? It says, vote for Maggie. She's come out in the open at last. She's speaking on the side. She's campaigning for real now. I don't want no shoe-in. Down with Granny. Disgusting <laughs> exhibition. What's that, dear? Granny is running behind. She probably thinks she can beat you to the corner. Beat me? In a limousine? Oh, how utterly absurd. That a circle of blocks she'll follow us clear into town. <laughs> she's a disgrace to Beverly Hills. She and her entire family should be run out of town. Did you notice that sign on the front of the mansion? Granny for Possum Queen? What a revolting idea. Keep talking, dear. Why doesn't that stupid woman give up? Come back here, Right in here, Jethro. Easy now. Hey, she is really bushed. She was holding her on the first two or three miles. I think she'd have caught the car if she hadn't a trip. <laughs> I reckon you best towed her right on up to her room. Ah, you don't. I got a campaign to run. Really, I think you've done enough running for a while. I declare you look like the last prune in the box. I'll be all right. Get me out of this heat. <laughs> all right. I'm all right. And now that Miss Drysdale has showed her hand, we got to swing in action. Ellie, you go and put on a pretty dress and commence passing my vote getters around house to house. Yes, some Granny. Vote getters? Yes, Jed, it's a gift package. A little sample of my lye soap, some candied crawdads, a couple of molasses cookies, and for them voters that's on the fence, a little snort of my friendly persuader. <laughs> That ought to knock him off the fence. <laughs> I never could afford a campaign like this when I was running for queen back home. I knew. Politics is a rich man's game. True. <laughs> Jethro, you get busy and start making me some signs mean mouth than Miss Drysdale. Well, how far you want to go, Granny? Call her anything you can think of. Remember what William Jennings Bryan said? Fight hard, but fight clean. Well, you ain't fighting clean, Granny. Of course I ain't. William Jennings Bryan was a loser. <laughs> Granny is running behind. Well, she probably thinks she can beat you to the corner. Beat me? In a limousine? How utterly absurd. That a circle of blocks she'll follow us clear to town. That little woman is a disgrace to Beverly Hills. She and her entire family should be run out of town. I told you I'd get Margaret's campaign going. Call the radio station and buy some time. For this? Well, 
little editing and the proper questions, this can make a very explosive interview. It might even get Marvin elected possum queen. You are a victim of self-hypnosis. There is not going to be a possum queen or a possum festival or a possum parade or a possum anything. You haven't taken care of those details. <laughs> all right, all right, don't get hysterical. I'll pull this out of the fire for you. <laughs> I get through at the radio station. I'll pick out the spot for the celebration. Let's see. Seal Beach, Costa Mesa, Dana Point, San Clemente. Oh, I'm going to make one of these little communities world famous as the home of the International Possum Festival. Ready? How's this for a mean mouth and sign? <laughs> well, that's the right idea, but it could be a mite stronger. Oh, look at this side. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale said there's a radio program coming on that he wants us to hear. Right here is where it's coming on. This is KBH, the voice of Beverly Hills. The following is a paid political announcement by the Margaret Drysdale for Possum Queen Committee. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale, how do you think the campaign is going? Granny is running behind. I think she has a chance to beat you? Beat me? How utterly absurd. How do you feel about your opponent personally? That little woman is a disgrace to Beverly Hills. She and her entire family should be run out of town. My doggie, that's hitting low. I'm sure those words are spoken only in the heat of a political battle. When the election is over, you will probably be good friends. What a revolting idea. Well, thank you, Mrs. Drysdale. Why doesn't that stupid woman give up? Thank you, Mrs. Drysdale. What a disgusting exhibition. Thank you, Mrs. Drysdale. We now return you to our regularly scheduled program. Now, Granny, don't cut loose in front of the youngins. Go in the pantry first and let off some steam. <laughs> Put your back, General. <laughs> I'm sorry, Granny, but there's a limit, even in politics. <laughs> sure my husband said he wanted to go for another drive? Yes, madam. We're to pick him up in town. Well, I'm glad he's finally realized what a great social asset I am to him. Yes, madam. <laughs> Make sure I had all the boat getters. All right, get up here in the back, honey, so you can hand them out. <laughs> Duke! <laughs> Go around the neighborhood now. Give everybody a look. <laughs> campaign manager. Right to the middle of town, boy. While Duke is getting the neighborhood vote, we'll go after the man in the street. <laughs> yes, sir. Put your needle on, Granny. Let her roll, boy. Drysdale found a spot for the Possum Festival? Not yet. So far, he's bombed all the way down the coast. <laughs> Last report has him headed for San Juan Capistrano. Drysdale's office. Chief, where are you? 
San Diego? Well, what, what happened in San Juan? Oh, really? <laughs> well, they do have a point. It just doesn't sound as romantic. When the possums return to Capistrano. <laughs> Gee, why, why don't you give up and come back? Tell the clamp it's the truth and admit... <laughs> all right, all right. You're the boss. <laughs> He's confident he can sell the Possum Festival to the next town. If he doesn't, he'll just about have to come back. He's almost to the border. Perkins, this is getting ridiculous. We've covered every foot of Beverly Hills three times. I'm sorry, madam, but I just can't remember the corner where Mr. Drysdale said he would meet us. Probably back at the bank by now. Take me there immediately. People are beginning to stare and point and even laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Janet, there is no further news. Ever since the chief crossed the border, a curtain of silence has descended. Well, there's plenty of noise around here. The Clampets are circling the block in Granny's campaign truck. They're announcing a big political rally in the bank parking lot. Oh, dear. Well, let's get down there and see what we can do. Together, folks. Granny's going to discuss the issues of this campaign. You're going to hear some real name calling. <laughs> Ready? Now, after the speech making, for them borders that's still undecided, my daughter is going to pass among you with some uh, friendly persuaders. <laughs> now, we're going to start off the rally by singing Granny's campaign song. Put your needle on. <laughs> Here's your choice for possum queen, Granny, Granny. She don't ride no limousine, Granny, all the way. Hey, lady, what's this all about? Oh, probably one of those hidden camera shows. <laughs> seven stone sopping wet. But in order to balance off Ms. Drysdale, it's going to take 30 or 40 good-sized possums. And where is them extra possums coming from? From your own backyard. <laughs> Understanding, I got it back this morning. <laughs> but there isn't going to be any possum festival. I was even turned down by Death Valley. <laughs> oh, I should have listened to you, Miss Hathaway. I never should have lied to the Clampers. It was just my foolish pride. No, no. We'll take you home so you can get some rest. 
No. No. First, I must face the Clavits and tell them the truth. Confess everything. I'm through with dishonesty and deceit. Miss Chief. Oh, what a bitter lesson I've learned. <laughs> Granny, where are you? In here, Jed. Granny, we gotta get out and vote. If it's like back home, the polls close at 10 and we... Why ain't you in your candidate outfit? Because I ain't a candidate, Jed. I'm withdrawn in favor of Miss Drysdale. You're what? I never knowed how much being possum queen meant to that woman. What you mean? Well, after I bested her at the rally, she went home, took to her bed, and she's been there ever since. She did seem to break her spirit. I don't want victory at that price. Let her ride in the parade this afternoon. Let her get the cheers and the glory. It's her hometown. <laughs> You're a little woman, but you got a mighty big heart. Oh, Mr. Dodd, I want to see you. Hello, my friend. <laughs> what in tarnation happened to you? Ellie, fetch my jug. This poor man looks like he's been drugged through an asshole. <laughs> Chief, tell him. Can I wait for the jug? <laughs> Mr. Clavett, Granny, I have something terrible to tell you. Now, we heard about your wife, and you can stop worrying. Granny's pulling out of the race. What? We ain't even going into town to watch the parade. But that's what Mr. Drysdale has come to tell you. Yes, you see, I... You're positive you're not going into town? <laughs> positive. I don't want to take none of the glory away from Miss Drysdale. Oh, that's a wonderful gesture, Granny. Of course, it's too bad you're going to miss that fabulous parade. <laughs> it's going to be the greatest in the history of Possum Day. <laughs> Marching band, floats, giant balloons, mounted riders, clowns, jugglers, airplanes, tanks, and elephants. Sorry, I couldn't find it right off. Don't need it now, Ellie. Granny's news picked that poor man right up off the floor. He'll do the same thing for his wife, too. There's no greater honor than being possum queen. Yeah, Granny, it's always next year. Yeah, I know. But to help me through this year, don't you think I deserve a little, uh... All right, Granny, quick as a pole's